How to test your English. It is Monday again, and I go to my school. Our teacher asks us what we did during the weekend. I say that I was at work on Saturday. I say that I can already do my work quite well. I say that I am happy when I can speak to our customers. When I speak, one of the girls in the class asks me, What happened to your voice? You sound very different from what we heard last week. Your pronunciation is very good. I smile and I say, Thank you. I tried to do shadowing on Saturday evening after my work and for all of Sunday. I tried to speak like a native speaker. I know that it is still not perfect, but I also noticed a big change in my pronunciation. Our teacher asks if anybody else tried to practice shadowing. Three students raise their hands. One of them is the student from South Korea. He also likes this technique. One student says that she tried the technique, but her mouth hurt a lot after five minutes of shadowing, and she had to stop. She also says that she wasn't always able to repeat everything. Sometimes it was hard for her to keep up with the speed of the recording. Our teacher says, Thank you for trying out this technique. If you do shadowing for the first time and your mouth hurts after five minutes, it means that you are doing it correctly. Your muscles need to be trained to this new way of speaking. It is like going to the gym for the first time. Your muscles can hurt if they are not trained. If your mouth's muscles hurt, you can take a break after five minutes and continue a bit later. With every five minutes of practice, your pronunciation should be a little bit better. Shadowing has also other advantages. You practice the correct pronunciation in English, and you also practice other things such as intonation, rhythm, and connecting words in whole sentences. I know that at the beginning, the recording can sometimes be too fast. If this happens, you can repeat only the first or the last word in the sentence. With practice, you will be able to repeat more. I agree that it is true. On Saturday, when I started with shadowing, it was quite difficult for me. Yet by Sunday evening, it was quite easy to repeat what I heard. Then I have a question for our teacher. I tell her that I looked at www.grammarinlevels.com. The website is interesting, but I don't know what level is for me because I don't know how many words I know in English. Our teacher asks other students if they know how many words they know in English. It is interesting to see that nobody knows. We know that we are intermediate students, but we don't know how many words we know. Our teacher says, there is a website for people who study foreign languages. You can do a test there. You can find out how many words you know. The test has only two steps, and it is really simple. The name of the website is www.testlanguages.com. You can do the test every month and you can see how much you improved during that month. If you want, you can now take out your smartphones and you can go to that website and do the test. I want to know how many words I know. I do the test immediately. 
I see that I know 2100 words in English. Most of the students know between 2000 and 2200 words. Only Monica and the boy from South Korea know 2500 words. Our teacher says, so you can see that when you go to www.grammarinlevels.com, you should already know grammar from level 1 and level 2. You can start using grammar from level 3 because level 3 is for students who know between 2,000 and 3,000 words. On Tuesday, I go to school again. One student asks our teacher an interesting question. She says, I would like to practice speaking with people around me, but I am afraid of making mistakes. I don't want to look stupid. Can you help me? Our teacher says, Making mistakes is a very interesting topic. There are a lot of opinions on it. I want to show you what I believe is the best approach. I have a lot of experience with this because I also learned new languages. I still continue doing it. For example, now I am learning Spanish. When I speak Spanish, I don't care if I make mistakes or not. The reason why I don't care about mistakes is simple. When I learned my native language, I didn't care about making mistakes either. So why should I care now? My main goal when I use any language is to express my ideas. That is all. I know that when I read a lot, speak and do shadowing, my Spanish will be better and better. I know that this can sound incredibly simple, but it is my opinion. This is what I have found after many years of both teaching and learning languages. It works very well for me and many of my students. When I speak, I only concentrate on speaking. At the moment, I know 1500 words in Spanish. It is the level of a two-year-old child. Two-year-old children make a lot of mistakes when they speak but they don't care about their mistakes. They continue using their native language, and when they are three years old, they make very few mistakes, and when they are four years old, they already speak very well with hardly making any mistakes. You should have the same attitude now most of you know about 2,000 words, so it is absolutely okay to make mistakes time to time. When you continue using English, there will be fewer and fewer mistakes in your speaking. It is not possible to get better without making mistakes. When you practice English, it is okay not to be perfect. Perfection comes with practice. Anybody who started to learn English started from the beginning, from the same level, which is level zero. Learning languages is like learning to play a musical instrument. It needs to be trained. When you start your training, it is not perfect at first, and you make mistakes. It is normal. Take it as a necessary part of your learning process. If you didn't go through this period of making mistakes, you could not get to higher levels. By continuing to do what you want to learn, the mistakes are gradually being eliminated. If you want to make fewer and fewer mistakes, do a lot of reading and shadowing. When you read, you can read aloud. It can also help you make fewer mistakes. In real conversations, care only about exchanging ideas. Don't care about making mistakes. When you speak, you practice changing your thoughts into words. 
You don't learn grammar or words. You have other activities for that. Don't worry. Everybody who learns a foreign language makes mistakes from time to time. Even famous people, bosses of big companies or politicians. When you listen to these people on TV, you see that they don't care about mistakes. They care about what is important, and that is expressing their ideas. You should do the same. Does it make sense? The girl says, Yes, thank you. On Wednesday, I go to school again. At the beginning of the lesson, one student says, I started to read more. I feel that it is good for me. I can see how my grammar is better, but I have a problem. When I read, I look up a new word in a dictionary. Then I continue reading. Sometimes when I see the same word again, only ten minutes later, I don't remember the word and I have to look it up again. Can you help me to remember the words better? Our teacher says that it is an interesting question, and she gives this explanation. It is absolutely normal that you don't remember the new word immediately. Usually, you will have to look up the word five times before you remember it. There will be also words that you will have to look up ten or fifteen times. These words are usually verbs. When we learn a new word, the word goes through phases. Only when you achieve the last phase, you remember the word very well. There are five of these phases. Let's have a look at them. The first phase is the moment when you see the word for the first time and you don't know the word. You look it up in the dictionary. The second phase is the moment when you see the word that you have already looked up in the dictionary or heard or saw it in the past. You know that you saw this word before, but you still don't remember its meaning. You look up the word again. The third phase is the moment when you see the word again and you feel what it could mean, but you are not sure. For example, you know that the word is some kind of object or some animal or a verb. The fourth phase is the moment when you already know what the word means when you see it but you are not able to recall the word when you want to say it. When this phase happens, the word is in your passive vocabulary. The fifth phase is the moment when you are able to use the word when you speak. Now you can see there are five phases all together. Do you understand now why it is not possible to remember a new word when you see it for the first time? You would have to jump across all the phases with the first encounter with the word. You have to see or hear every word several times and let it go through all the phases until you get to phase number five. You can be happy not only when you learn a new word perfectly, but also when you get from one phase to the other. When it happens, you are closer to the final goal, and it is to use the word without problems in everyday communication. All of this is interesting to me. I didn't know about these phases, but it is all logical. It also happened to me that I looked up a new word in the dictionary, but two minutes later I didn't know what the word was, and I had to look it up again.
I felt stupid that I didn't remember the word. Now I know that it is absolutely okay not to remember the word forever when I see it for the first time. I need several encounters with the word before I can use the word well. After school, I go to my football training. Our coach tells us that there will be a match on Saturday. The school team will play against another school team from Cambridge. Our coach tells me to come and play for the school team. I am very happy and I am looking forward to the Saturday match. When you want to remember a new word, you need to see or hear the word about ten times. The next day, I go to school again. One of the students has an important question. He wants to know how to improve his listening skills. He wants to know what the best approach is. Our teacher says, Thank you for your question. Good listening skills are very important for communication. If you don't understand what people are saying, it will be difficult for you to speak with them. There are a lot of materials on the Internet for students of English. Some students can have a problem with finding the right listening materials for them. Let's have a look at what you should listen to. There are two types of materials which you can listen to. You can listen to some audio or you can watch a film. These are quite different materials and different rules apply to them. When you listen to some audio, you should know 95% of the words or more. The audio has a lot of new words. Read the text first if possible and make sure you know all the words. When you practice listening, you practice getting information from a spoken language. You don't try to learn new words. Of course, sometimes you can learn new words, but it is not the main goal. When you listen, concentrate on getting information from spoken English. It is important to use materials at your level of English. For example, you can use books in simplified English which contain an audio recording. I really recommend these books to you. They are fantastic because you can choose a book at your level of English. When you have such a book, read the book first and then listen to the recording at home or when you travel. You can read two great books at www.robinsoncrusoeinlevels.com or www.thelittleprinceinlevels.com. You can also visit www.newsinlevels.com if you like listening to the news. All these materials are in three levels of English. The second type of materials for listening practice are films and videos on www.youtube.com. These are also great. You can start using them when you know 2,000 words in English or more. This is what you should do with a film. Watch it for the first time with subtitles so that you know what the film is about. Then watch the film without subtitles. If you like the film very much, you can watch it more than once. When you watch one film many times, with every view, you will understand more. It is also good to watch videos on the Internet about interesting subjects. For example, if you like nature, you can watch documentaries about nature. You can also watch reality shows. 
Reality shows are much easier to understand than films or documentaries because the structure of the show is usually the same. It is necessary to have at least 30 minutes a day of listening. The more you listen, the faster you will understand more words. When listening, you should always look at what you already understand, even if it is just 10% at the beginning. It is very easy to demotivate yourself by realizing all of the parts that you don't understand yet. Look at what you already know. Be happy for every new sentence you have understood. Listening is the easiest way to learn. You don't have to do anything. You just listen. Did this information help you? Yes, says the student. Thank you. The listening topic is very interesting for me. Now I know what to do to improve my listening. When you want to be good at listening, Listen for 30 minutes every day. On Friday, we have an interesting conversation in our class. Our teacher has a question for us. She asks, Do you remember your first impulse to learn English? Do you remember the moment when you started to learn English? I say that I remember the moment when I started to be interested in English. My teacher says, Can you tell us about this moment? I say, Yes. First, I have to say that English wasn't always my favorite subject. I started to learn English at high school. At the beginning, it was very difficult for me. I didn't understand the structure of the language. It was illogical to me. I tried to remember words. I tried to learn grammar, but it was very hard to me. When I finished high school, I was still only a beginner. I couldn't speak English, and I believe that I couldn't learn this language. I believed that English wasn't for me. Then something happened. I always liked music and when I was 20 I started to listen to the Beatles. I wanted to understand their songs. So I started to translate the texts of their songs. Slowly I understood more and more. Then I met two ladies from England on a train. We had a simple conversation, but it helped me very much. I started to believe that I could learn English. From that moment, I was working on my English almost every day, and I was better and better. Then I started to go to this school. My teacher thanks me for telling my story. She also tells me, here is something very interesting about your story. First, you didn't have motivation to learn English. Then you had a motivation. You wanted to understand songs. You can see that motivation is very important. When you have it, you can learn English. When you don't have it, it is very hard to be successful. Then our teacher asks everybody in the class about their motivation to learn English. The stories are very interesting. One girl's motivation is to be able to read historical books in original English. One student wants to be a professional tennis coach in England. He wants to speak perfect English before he starts his career as a coach. One woman wants to work for a big international company and she needs English for her job. 
I can see that everybody has some motivation to use English in real life or to get information from books. At the end of the lesson, our teacher asks us if we like English. I say, I didn't like English at my high school, but now I like it a lot. I can see how useful it is to know this language. Our teacher says, This is another important factor when you learn a new language. It is good when you like something which is connected to English. It can be people, music, culture or history. If you like English, it is easier for you to learn it. If you want to communicate in English, it is good to know 3,000 words or more. If you don't like English, it is more difficult to find time to practice. Then it is difficult to get to the level of 3,000 words. I can agree with my teacher. Now, I like the Beatles, but also my teacher and my boss, who is also English. I also like English humor. Now, it is much easier for me to find time to practice English every day. On Saturday, I go to play football for my school team. We have some very good players on our team and we win 3-2. We are all very happy. We go to the pub after the match and we celebrate our victory. When you want to learn English, you need to have motivation to use English every day.